Hello, friends. Today we will talk about Weapon Awakening in Albion, as many beginners ask questions about what it is, how this mechanic works and what it is for. We'll also figure out what stats need to be upgraded on weapons for different types of content. So like, subscribe and let's get to it. So, Awakening is upgrading a max enchanted weapon to point 4. These items can only be created through crafting professions using primordial resources. To awaken a weapon, you will need Avalonian energy and drained energy, as well as silver. The amount of these resources depends on the tier of the awakened item. The higher it is, the more expensive it is. After awakening, the weapon receives new parameters, one of them is a setting that increases by killing mobs. The setting has a limited quantity and is consumed when upgrading a weapon. And the more you enhance the item, the more the setting limit and its consumption will increase when upgrading. That is, roughly speaking, the more you upgrade an item, the more mobs you will need to kill for subsequent improvement. Awakened weapons T4 and TV can be upgraded in safe zones. Starting from T6 and above, Upgrading is only available in locations with equipment loss, i.e. in red and black zones. It doesn't matter if it's Avalon, Mist, Open World, CG, etc. The main thing is that it's not safe there. The easiest way to level up alone in unsafe zones. These are red locations around the city of Brazilian. We take the skip set, open the map or look for a solo dungeon, go in, wait 90 seconds, and then, chilling and relaxing, pump up our weapons. Yes, not as fast as in England or in group content, but almost safe. Especially since there are very, very few people in the red zones in Brazil. When we have farmed the setting, we go back to the city to the artifact master and start adding stats. We randomly get three characteristics to choose from out of 19. Having chosen one of them, we can leave it or, in the case of stats we don't need, replace them until we get the desired stat to choose from. After we have received the desired characteristic, we can strengthen it. Strengthening can be normal and procced, which significantly strengthens the characteristic. Such successes happen by chance, it's a matter of luck. For all these actions, in addition to the settings, we also pay silver. By strengthening, adding or changing the characteristics of the weapon, we increase its load which affects the cost of any subsequent actions when upgrading an item. Therefore, sometimes, in case of unsuccessful attempts to find the necessary stats or in case of a meager improvement of the item, it makes sense to remove awakening. Thereby reducing the load back to zero and trying your luck with upgrading the weapon again. Also, by strengthening our gun, we increase its rating. This parameter opens the possibility of adding one more stat to the item, maximum 3. The rating increases due to the pumping of stats. The better they are pumped, the higher the rating. Also, items with a high rating can go to the world drop instead of being destroyed when the character dies. And drop as a reward in any PvE activity to a random player. When transferring an awakened item to another player, he will not receive awakening bonuses, since the item must first be rebound to a character in the same workshop, paying silver for it. The higher the item's tier, as well as its load, the more expensive this binding will be. But in the event of a victory over an opponent in PvP, the item you obtained in this way is rebound to you. Well, we've sorted out the mechanics. Now let's talk about what stats to add to items. Let's look at several areas. Solo PvP and PvE and Group PvP and PvE. Of course, there are specific tasks for which you can roll something special, but for 99% of players the information will be empty, so let's go through, so to speak, the basic content. So, for a single player game like Myst, where we have simple PvE and PvP in the open world, the basic stats for most meta weapons will be as follows. KDR or Skill Recovery Acceleration. This is probably one of the best stats on a weapon. Since by accelerating the KD, 
we will be able to use skills more often to deal damage, mobility and defense. After all, this characteristic affects not only the weapon skills, but our entire build. Therefore, having this stat, we will catch up and run away, and also use our entire arsenal of skills more often. Damage by skills, also one of the best characteristics, as it simply increases the damage of our skills including skills from other items, such as the Cap of Purity or the Jacket of the Scout. If our build does not use an additional source of damage, for example a build through the Sword of Carnage, then in general this stat can be replaced with an additional IP, which will also give us damage from sword skills, and also buff damage from normal attacks. And of course the third stat is survivability. It is best to use additional health. Since with a large amount of HP, we will restore more with the help of a health potion, since it regenerates our health in percentage. If there is no health, then we take defense, also a good stat that reduces incoming damage, but still health in solo PvP is more preferable. There is also life steal, but it does not work for all builds and not against all opponents. In my opinion, a more universal parameter would be defense or health. But you are free to do what you want, I do not forbid you. If our goal is only to farm glory in PV, then we can choose such characteristics. Of course, additional glory from monsters, because why do we need PvE if not to farm glory? I also recommend increasing damage with skills, which will speed up the killing of mobs, and therefore increase the amount of fame received per hour. If our PvE is heavy, for example we farm statics or blue platforms in Avalon, then a good option would be punishment of life, which will increase our survivability by dealing damage to mobs. This stat looks especially good on the Shadow Summoner. But in general, for PvE with the third stat in solo, you don't have to bother. An additional IP will do, as well as speeding up the recovery of skills, or nothing at all, if you feel sorry for the money. Group and Raid PvP Here, in my opinion, the basis is survival, since you will be of little use if you die at the very beginning of the battle. Of course, if your party is some kind of boom pack, then this parameter is not so important, but in a regular party or raid, survival is the basis. And the main stat will be defense which simply reduces incoming damage. If in solo PvP it was health because of the health potion, then here defense will be slightly more preferable. Because there is usually a healer in the party that will provide you with healing, regardless of your maximum health. However, the health stat itself will also work. The more of it, the harder it is to shoot you with one cast. So we also roll for weapons. And the second or third stat depends on our role. DD, damage by skills, or IP, if you fail to catch damage. Tank, duration of control, but you can do without it. But it's better with it. Hill, outgoing healing, In the case of the or Holy IP, staff, you can also use CDR, but the healing power is still preferable. And the last thing is group PvE. Here, as in solo, the main thing is to decide why you are going to farm this content. If for glory, then of course we roll additional glory in PvE. The second characteristic is damage of skills, duration of control or outgoing healing, it all depends on your role in the party. The third stat is specific, depending on what build you are going with. Or if it is dangerous PvE, for example in the paths of Avalon or static dungeons, then you can roll defense or additional health. For some builds, a CDR like Light Crossbow is a good choice. You can also take spell casting speed on frost staves as it will increase the damage of the shards. Well, or an additional IP will suit almost any DD build. Tanks also sometimes roll additional aggro so that mobs do not rush your party, but this is used mainly in hardcore expeditions. For regular PvE in the open world this is not required, if you at least sometimes press your buttons on mobs. Well, that's all. Yes. We have many more different stats that can be rolled, but most of them have no use or are used very rarely in any one setup. That's why I don't mention them, if you have any questions or want to add to everything said above, don't hesitate to write.
Well, I hope the topic of awakening weapons has become clearer and more understandable for you. Write your comments, what have you already awakened there? Also like and subscribe to the channel. Visit Telegram and Discord with announcements of streams on Twitch and other useful information. And also check out the second channel with cuts from streams. That's all, with you was Rigoro.